any agent that isn't successful, you're being a pussy and you're pussying out of what it takes to get that success. We're all so f***ing cool that no one wants to be vulnerable. You know, your Instagram, you're acting like you're a billionaire and you're living in your mum's wardrobe and it's like, well, you actually got to go back to reality in order to create a different reality. If you're out there and you're watching this and you want to have a crack, it's got to come back to you. You're getting into real estate. What skills are the most important for someone to master? I think really... So you've mastered the market, but now you want to start winning for yourself. I'm Daniel Lee. Some know me as real estate's funny guy, but in the Get Keen podcast, we get down to business and explore what gets people really keen, how to get the most out of your real estate career, how to build a successful business and live the best life for yourself and your family. We'll uncover how to be hugely successful in real estate, setting you up to get keen and make the next big move in your life. Welcome along to the Get Keen podcast. We have a very special guest today. I've been very excited for this one. We got Mr. Tony O'Doherty. <laughs> Bloody hell, I love that name, Tony. Thank you. I credit my parents for it. Yeah, I, I'll give I'll give your mother a call and I'll I'll tell her she she's, did a good she's, job. She's landing here on I Sunday just, for three months. I have another mate called Tony. I, every time he answers the phone, I'm like Tony. Yeah, yeah, Sopranos all the way. Do you get that a lot? Yeah, I, I do. Fat you. Tony, but. Not anymore. Can you do the voice? No. Okay. Am I going to try? No. Might work, it might work well with the Irish accent. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. We'll skip that one. But anyway, for the audience listening today, let me tell you a little bit about Tony O'Doherty. Very, very high performing agent. He is the number one agent for Bell Estate Agents, um, a, a well recognized Australian brand, over 180. Franchises? Yeah, 180 franchises nationally. Um, Huge. All premium suburbs, mm -hmm. good operators, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huge. And he's been number one there for the last three years. Correct. If I read correctly. You did. You did. I did well. Or I may have asked someone. <laughs> yeah, you may have asked somebody. Who knows? Yeah. But to get to where you are, and I've, I've seen the figures, and I hate to talk figures because, you know, I don't <laughs> want to embarrass you with yeah. numbers, but... We're talking uh, commission amounts within his team of, of in excess of five million plus. Tell me if it's more or less, if you like. <laughs> it's more. <laughs> but when you say I hate to talk figures, I actually do. Um, but yeah, we, we've, we've, um, we've, we've experienced success. The challenge now is sustaining the success and growing and improving our service. But... Our best year, we 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 um we achieved north of that significantly. We we did just over six million in our best year. We're doing an average of four and a half to five in the years before and after, and at the moment we're very much in the process of building. Mm, yeah. mm. And that is just it's a remarkable it's remarkable to be able to get there. Only very few percentage of agents in in the industry can achieve those sorts of results. And of course, it's not just Tony himself. He's got a, a, a great team. Yep. And we'll talk a little bit about that. I'd love to know, you know, how your team works, what you focus on. But to start off, I actually would love to know about your background because what interests everyone about Tony O'Doherty is that awesome Irish accent. We don't get a lot of that around Australia. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty strong. So I'm assuming you came to Australia quite late. How, how, when did you get here and how did you find your way into real estate? First of all, the accent thing, right? Everybody thinks I'm successful because of my accent. Well, and I thought that. Yeah, well, there you go. It's, so not it's just an, any Irish person watching, get on a plane, you'll be hugely <laughs> successful, done. Just have an accent. And the flip side, so I feel as though I'm um, being shortchanged twice. Australian people think I'm successful because of my accent and my mum just thinks fuck if you go to Australia you're going to be successful so both sides I'm sold short so I'm on in Ireland I'm just successful because I'm here and here I'm just successful because I'm Irish so thank you very much nothing to do with my hard work and my amazing team so it's there we have it accent. people write that down yeah so you guys just jump on a plane fuck off to Ireland and you'll be a millionaire it's simple as that oh does it work in reverse as well oh, I believe so maybe go to a better economy okay. try America okay. oh, I don't know how good America is anyway <laughs> Um, answer your question, 2011. I came here in 2011. I was a 21-year-old, which I know, doing quick math, um, puts me at 34. Uh, visually, I look 72. Um, <laughs> I feel in my mid-40s, uh, <laughs> but I am young-ish. Ish. 2011 got here. Um, I know you said to look at you. I just gravitated towards the camera, which is over in the corner of the room. So sorry, guys. It's all good, mate. Um, yeah, I came here at 21. 
Um, and then how did you fall into real estate? Did you do it straight away? No, I worked in construction like a lot of Irish people do, civil. I was working out in mining. I had an, a neck and back injury, which was just still to this day is, is troubles me. I was with a chiropractor this week, but it limited my ability to work uh, physically, which was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. And there's probably a message in it for anybody who's in a crossroads in life. Um, what can be perceived to be a major negative can be a big positive when you look back and you join the dots. You know, I'd probably, no doubt I'd be self-employed and running a business because that's where my mind is at. But it might have been very different. And A hundred percent, you know. And, and sometimes what seems to be a tragedy at a time can open another door like it has with you. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is our, is, is our minds and, and how we handle stuff. You know, you can be a victim of an incident or an accident or an environment or you can be somebody that got slapped in the face and, and got up and focused on moving forward and progressing and and I think I deserve credit for doing that um and I'm crediting myself early in the podcast because it took a very long time for me to get comfortable enough to um acknowledge what we've achieved yeah nice I was going to credit you but maybe I'll just leave that up to you today um so when did uh, you you got into it? What year? Where did you start? Were you like straight on the phone as a sales, like mm. thrown in the deep end? Were you a sales associate? So uh, 2015 is the answer. I got into real estate in 2015. Um, I spent about nine months working as a sales associate um, with a mother-daughter duo. Mm-hmm. Um they did, um, at the time, it felt like a lot of business. They were doing good business, uh, maybe 40 transactions a year, which mm-hmm. is good business. Yeah. Um, worked with them for eight or nine months. Traditional old school management and leadership in the business. It was an old, um, um, I suppose, without going into too much detail, it was the traditional way. So yeah. come in, sit down, get on the phone. You'll make it or you'll fail. Yeah. 90% failure rate. Yeah, sure. Um, I spent nine months with this with this um, mother and daughter went out on my own um, very quickly. The principal of the business, um, I suppose, saw an opportunity. We started working together. Uh, within our first year, we wrote very good business. Um, I met Elite in the Ray White group mm-hmm. um, in my first year. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, never looked back. So what did you learn in those first years to sort of set you up for success? I heard um, something in early days. Uh, Phil Parker, who most of you will know, uh, said something and I'd never... I never forgot it. I was in a training session very early and he said, this will be the easiest, worst paying job or the hardest, best paying job you've ever had. And I remember thinking, I know which one I'm going for. Yeah. And um, I think I, my skill set was conducive with that of a good agent, you know, mm-hmm. um, but also I had so many disadvantages in terms of didn't know, didn't have a network, no network, yeah. zero zilch, none. Yeah. You know, competing against people who went to schools, who their fathers, their grandfathers, their great grandfathers, competing against depth and culture and community and network. I had nothing. Um, I didn't know the geography. I didn't know the legislation. I didn't know people. I didn't know property. I didn't know the fucking laws around it. I knew nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. And I say that with a smile because there's people at home watching this and that's why I'm here today. Um, I'm here today hoping that you and I can have an impact on somebody at the other end of the camera who actually, you know, puts down their excuses and starts to turn up or maybe, you know, whatever it is. Hopefully we can have a positive impact. A hundred percent. That's what this is for. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'll get something out of it too. I think I'm going to come out of this and be a new man. (laughs) Um, this, yeah. So what skills, you know, I mean, you're in the trenches in the beginning. You don't know anything. You never get out of the trenches. Yeah, though, yeah like. it's true. But it's a different trench. Yeah, 100%. Um, and your role changes within the trench. Yeah. I, quick, I mean, I still to say Fra- to my Frank business Green. partner, Dylan, all the time, mm. I feel like we're back in the trenches again. And but it's if, literally every fortnight. If you, you don't hate it on a regular basis, <laughs> yeah. you're not growing. Yeah, you yeah. Know? We're, we're, we're always in the trenches. But it's a different trench in the beginning. Yes. It is a, in, you know, and as you build your trench. team and you get help in doing certain tasks, your roles change and things like that. But you're always in the trenches. But in the beginning, you're doing a bit of everything. So you've got to really focus on certain things. What, what, did, you, what did you focus on? I'm guessing when you were working with that principal you learned some good habits and you were really focusing on some certain tasks to get your head. You learn good and bad. Mm. In my opinion, the vast majority of our industry um, has a lot, 
um, of development in front of them. How diplomatic is that? A lot of our industry is just not good enough, um, and that's the brutal reality of it. And that's why it's so, you see these people that pop up and grow quickly. It's because everybody around them has market share, but there is no, there's no true operator um, in a marketplace. So there's massive opportunity. But to answer your question, for anybody at home, early doors in their career, or for me in mine, he or she who makes the most calls and has the most meaningful conversations wins. You know, a lot of our industry measure outgoing calls, measure meaningful conversations. If you have finned 100 people today, you'd be better off if you never got out of bed. If you have thoughtful, meaningful conversations with 20 people, that's progression, that's growth, that's improvement. That's a huge thing to say because I often yeah. hear coaches and, you know, watching Instagram and whatever. There's so many people who have their thoughts and a lot of it is around how many calls you do in a day, you know. And you make 100 calls. If you get 70 answering machines, you get uh, 25 people that don't say anything to you. They answer the phone and say they're busy. Yep. See you later. And you have five meaningful conversations. And then the number's the, five. The number's five, yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's the value yeah. of the phone call. Because then you start to focus on data as well. Yeah. You know, if you increase the quality of your data and you, yeah, like you need to measure the right things. Mm. You know, I mean, yeah, you got to miss a lot of shots to to, um, to score. But at the end of the day, the team who has the most shots doesn't win the game. It's the team who found the net the most. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it does work in the same way. I mean, to have so many meaningful conversations, you need to make a certain amount of calls because you are going to hit the answering machine a lot. You are going to get a certain amount of people that don't want to yes. talk to you at all. But if you're, fo but if you're focused on just someone answering or just making the call and you're not actually focused on what you're actually saying and what value you're giving to the person on the other end of that phone call, 100%. then what is the point? If you're focused on the gross number, you're going to knock, you're going to rush through a potential meaningful conversation to get to the gross number. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like GCI. Everything in our game is ego driven, right? The whole thing is set up. This is how I feel. It's set up to, I don't know, to, to boost our egos. It's a very egocentric industry. I think, mm -hmm. you know, oh, God, we yes i don't need to go on about that i'm always banging on about it that's just true you know it is it it draws that a lot of that brings uh, out the worst it brings out the and worst the more um it's the unfortunate part about the real estate industry because unfortunately i think there are actually less egomaniacs in real estate than the general public think they just see the ego but they see the ego yeah <laughs> they see those muppets everywhere because yeah. they're, they're peacock everywhere yes. they have to be yeah, seen the peacocks shine yeah. the brightest yeah. you know especially on all your screens you yeah know? yeah so um yeah so i, I really want to knuckle down into that development of of you because you've done this in nine years and and i know that's a you know it's it's a long time but you know it's also not a long time. It's not a long time. And, and um, you know, we, we could even say we've done it in five. Like, we, we reached very um, so high heights in year year four. Like, our numbers really compounded. Yeah. Um, yeah. That bell curve. Yeah, absolutely. At Bell Property, the there bell you curve. Go. Hey? <laughs> I just put that together. You like that? No. <laughs> you, can, you, you can use that. No, you love can it. I not? You love it. No, write that down. Oh, I suppose I laugh. <laughs> Was it a sympathy laugh? We let you judge. So, so take us back. I want to know more about the beginning. Yeah. The, the the original Doherty. Like you didn't, because you said you didn't know a thing. You don't know. You don't have network. You don't know anything about mm. real estate. You don't really even know our culture. You're just trying mm. to fit in, and True. you have suddenly become a fairly successful agency early uh, agent early on mm. with your with your principal and all that so was it was it calls all day was it was it a number of calls and what was the objective i suppose it was just general output so the yeah. work ethic was very high i genuinely care about people as well like i, I do and that's what i'd strongly encourage you to do if, if it's about money um that needs to be a byproduct. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't work nearly. I wouldn't work my arse off all the time if this was a poorly paying job. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm commercially minded. We're business people at the end of the day. Um, but if it's about the people, if it's about helping, impacting their lives, people have um, the ability to read you more than you'd ever think. So, if your intentions are good and you give good advice and you work hard and you care, 
straight away you're in the top, you know, you're in the top mm -hmm. tier of the game. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, that's what I focused on. When I met people, when I was at open homes, when I was interacting with them, and there's something else that I'll relate that, or state that I don't normally state on record. I have a very bad memory, very bad. So you would think to be at our level, you need to be able to say, oh, hi, Kate, how's Josh? How are the kids? What's the dogs? I can't do any of that. Never. I, I, I like, honestly, but despite that, I actually give a fuck. Yeah. And people can sense that. They can sense within two seconds. You walk into a shop and some, I was only talking to my guys about this this morning in a sales meeting. You walk into a shop and somebody's trying to sell you something. The first thing you want to do is not buy it. It's just like, hmm, because that person's primary focus is selling a product. You walk into a shop and that guy or girl says to you, oh, we've got a better quality product than that. We've got a cheaper quality. Straight away, you gravitate to that person. Mm. You walk into a big store like a JV Hi-Fi and the young guy's there who's actually into tech and doesn't give a fuck about profitability or anything. He or she's thinking, come over here, I'll show you this one. This does exactly what that does for a fraction of the price. Why don't you buy that? You like him. Mm. He's not selling to you. Yeah. He's just making some money while he goes to uni and actually gives a shit about your, you know what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, about your experience. About your experience yeah. and your outcome and your needs. Mm -hmm. You go to a shop where it's, you know, you go to an Apple where it's, um, very careful now about naming brands, but where it's about gross revenue and your experience will be completely different. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to be, yeah, so my, my message is, um, if we put more into the people and if we care about the outcome. So I'm guessing you really care about the experience mm. that everyone has with you when you're interacting with them. 100%. And don't get me wrong, my job is, I work for you as a seller. Mm -hmm. My job is to optimize the sale price. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, when you strip away all the bullshit, my job is to get as much money as possible and put it into your pocket. So I can't say that, oh, I'm going to care for the buyer's from that point of view, no, I'm not. I'm going to get every cent I possibly can from you and give it to you. But what I will do, because I do care, I'll make sure that what you're buying is what we're selling and what we're selling is what you're buying and there's nothing hidden and everything's above board and we give you honest summaries of, of the product, of the home, and we're just honest and integral in our dealings with you. You will buy cheaper from other people, no doubt about it, hands, hands down. But you won't be buying this place. But you won't be buying this place. <laughs> yeah. That's funny what you say about your memory. I have the same issue. You know what? I can never remember names. And I do the trick, say it five times in the head and all that. I'll turn around five minutes later and I can't remember the name. Yeah. And it's... it's. Do you remember my name? It's... I only do because it's Tony. All right. If no, it wasn't Dodie. Tony, then yeah, yeah. I might have cameraman. Forgotten. He cameraman. He he would know. Yeah, yeah. he would know. He he knows everything. Dill dill dill. He's good. Rhymes but that, that that problem, just the way I solve it, right? Because I'm. Are you one of these guys bad with names, good with faces? Oh, I don't. I, that's the problem, and I know I should know them. So the pressure comes. I always remember when I saw them. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, which is helps, yeah. and this is how you get out of it, right? So you see this person and they're like, because they always remember you yes. because it's easy to remember the one agent. It's not easy for the agent to remember the 500 buyers, but they remember you. Oh, hey, Daniel. And I go, ah, oh, when you came to that place, I saw you at, at, at Clarence Road. You know, I'll just, I'll, I'll say where I saw them. Yes. And then they think, they instantly think, yeah, believe I, I know exactly who they are. So, yeah. so I haven't forgotten them, even though I've forgotten their name. Yes, and that gets you out of it to a certain degree. Because how many times do we have to say, "Oh, g'day, mate." How are oh, you? mate, is the universal. I don't <laughs> know your worst. name. Name. It's the yeah. worst. Yeah, so, yeah. what what skills, you know, do you think you're getting into real estate? What what skills are the most important for someone to master? You know, because you you had to master some skills early on. Communication. Yeah. I think really in our in our early days we're glorified telemarketers really. Mm, we and, are. Yeah, to be exceptional on the phone I think is invaluable. Uh, to understand you're a service provider, um, to give knowledge without expectation. Um, structure is important. Like you need to no, you're not you're never going to reach success the first time around. The way it works is about ninety seven percent of the market are not in the market at any one time. So everybody's running around trying to get to the 3%. And the real art of the game is, what are you doing with the 97% while you're looking for the 3%? 
in most cases, it's burning and churning. But the really good operators, they're servicing the community. Because you're not going to, very rarely you're going to ring someone and they say, oh, geez, thank God you called. I wasn't going to sell my house, but now I'm going to sell it. Can you be here today? 3%, 10K marketing, auction, let's go. <laughs> doesn't work like that. Definitely doesn't. It doesn't work like that. But if you can service the community well enough, they might call you and say, hey, Daniel, um, we're thinking of doing something. You want to come and see us? That's the art. And that's the be- the best teams, you know, in my office and, and agents I talk to, that's exactly what they do mm. is they, you know, and you can't do it all on your own when you're at your size, but you have a team and your team services the marketplace. And it's not about Definitely. just getting that. Listings will come if you do the activities that bring the opportunities. 100%. You know? and, that's, that's, and that's where it's difficult because when you don't mm-hmm. have traction or profile and you're not a, you know, an attraction agent, you need to get business but not behave like you need to get business. Mm, yes. You know, um, it's hard to have best people's best interests at heart if you're focusing on paying your rent. Um, and it's why teams are becoming more and more dominant. Mm-hmm. Like if I was a young agent watching this or an agent or junior or whatever, I would align myself with a team. I think anybody who, you know, just runs at it, you're in trouble. Very hard these days. Very because hard. I see yeah. the marketplace more and more being slurped up by bigger teams and agents. Yeah. You know, when I started in, I started 2007, there was agents of your your size, teams of your size weren't around. Yeah. I remember going to my first ARIC in 2009 and there were people up on stage and they... I remember watching this lady and she had one assistant and she was on stage and her gross commission for the year was 700000 right? And I couldn't believe it. And I, I was talking with my How colleague. How are you doing that? 700000 which, mind you, is perfectly a, a very healthy income for anyone. Yeah, and, but then and, and a two-person team. But, yes. But where it's gone from there. House prices, commission rates. Seven hundred k then is one four today. And these, like... To have an just to have an assistant back then yeah. was huge. Wow, you've got a full time assistant. You've somebody well, who helps you. Most of the agents I worked in an office, and there might have been maybe fifteen agents, and one of them had an assistant, which was me. One of them, and every other agent in their office was a single agent doing everything on their own. And the top that they could do was possibly like the best other agent might have been doing three hundred thousand in GCI. You know which at the time was still very good. But where it's gone is, you know, super teams. Teams of three or four servicing the market. And and to get that traction as a single agent right now is much harder, Mm -hmm. much harder to go from from zero to to something. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I would agree. I don't think it's an opinion. I think it's a fact. Yes. You know, I think in today's world... um, It's it's near on impossible. Mm. And also, let's think about it for a second. If you're sitting at a dining room table, if you don't fully believe that you are great at your job, it's going to be very hard for you to um, convince the vendors. Um, and if you're sitting there as a green agent who hasn't served your apprenticeship, you're not the best person. Mm. And you come up against a smooth, good operator, somebody, I was going to say someone like me, but that sounds egotistical. What I mean is somebody who has the support that I have. I am where I am because of the people I have around me. And if you try and take on the four people I have on your own, you're fucked. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's true. And not only is swearing allowed in this? Yeah. 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 Oh. I haven't heard you yet. Fuck. Okay. There you go. Do you want to go one more? That was a bit uncomfortable for you. <laughs> I don't say it that often on okay. this, but okay. I'll do it a few more times for you. We can okay. edit this if you like. It just, just sounds better when you say it because it's like... Yeah. I'm not going to do the accent. Okay, don't. Yeah, that's good. What I mean is I've got some people in my team that are exceptional at what they do and the leverage that they bring, the knowledge that they bring, the experience that they bring. For an individual, I don't care who you are, um, to think that you can take on a team, it just doesn't work that mm. way in any industry or mm. any sport, you know? Well, knowing what you know now, if you were, uh, like if you, let's say you got kicked out of Brisbane, Right, we don't want any Irish here anymore. Get out of here. Sounds you, racist, you say, but okay. You, you, you're taking all the money. Yeah, all right? yeah, okay. All right, I'm so leaving you, all the money. You have my to vendors. go to a brand new area. <coughs> yes. Right. Yes. Knowing what you know now, if you had to start again in a brand new area on your own, mm-hmm. right? 
what activities would you focus on for the first six months? Like what would you do? You got 10 hours in a day, go. Okay, 10 hours in a day. First of all is, if it's me, you're talking about me, I've got resources, I'm bringing people with me. I'm bringing two prospectors with me. Or no, I'm... no, no. Can't okay. do that. Well, you see, he did say me. No, he's no, changing no, it's it. just you. Okay. Until you, until you got the ball rolling, you got no money. Okay. okay. You can't afford prospectors. Tony 2010. Yeah. Tony 2010, with but you've got the knowledge. knowledge. With today's knowledge. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there quicker. <laughs> Coney, wasn't there Coney 2010 as well? Yeah, he's, <laughs> well, he's not a good guy. We're not associating with him. We have a lot of editing to do on this podcast. We're talking about not Coney 2010. It's, it was 2011 too, it, wasn't was it? Was it? Yeah, it was. Something, something like that. For those of you who don't know who So let's Coney go Tony is. 2011. Tony, Tony 2011, okay. Um... Okay, what I'm doing is I'm going to an area. I, you, I'm moving to Sydney. Is that the high Yeah, you're moving I'm to moving Sydney. To Sydney. I'm picking a demographic I feel as though I can relate to. I'm picking a price po a point that I want to interact with. I'm picking a suburb that has enough transactions and enough turnover. And I'm going in there and I'm picking 1,500 houses within there. And I'm going to contact those 1,500 people multiple times through multiple different ways. So in their letterbox weekly, they're going to rece receive something from me that's highly informative, asking for absolutely nothing in return. Then we're going to communicate with them every time we have relevant news um, and repeatedly over time. As soon as we get a listing, we're going to go back and tell everybody about it. We are going to speak to those 1,500 people as many times a year as we can bring value to them until we have enough business to use that business to leverage and get more business. It's incredibly simple. So simple, it's difficult. That was the best explanation of what to do. And it's Doesn't just feel so, like the best. You know, it seriously is... So simple. This job is is not rocket science. Oh, I mean, it's, it's 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 hard work. Yeah. It's a grind. Yeah. But it is actually really simple. It's simple in its purity. The hard part is uh, having the communication and negotiation skills to get a buyer to pay something they never wanted to pay. It's easy to get average results and it's easy to build an average business. To be elite is difficult. It boils down to just that fear of rejection and people got to get over it you know because you are going to get rejected a lot doing that recipe you're going to get knocked down you're going to whether or not and and how you do it whatever way you do it you're going to get people throwing mud in your face if you drop letterbox drops in someone's uh in 1500 letterbox drops every week mm. you are going to get called from the one percent who have nothing better to do in the day. But and that 1% is going to serve you a few names over the phone and rattle <laughs> you a bit, right? Yes, yes. If you call all 1,500 of those people every time you have a piece of inf information which you think is highly important for them to know, you are going to get 5% of them saying, where the hell did you get my number? Yeah, yeah. Don't call me. I'm going to report you, you piece of shit. No, that's I don't I like real... Don't ever effing call me again Don't do that. Yeah, and that fair. is going to rattle you yes and if you knock on every door of those 1500 every time you want to try and spark a conversation you're going to get another five percent going mate i'm in the middle of dinner what the f do you think you're doing and you're going to get a big dog yeah. run around the side barking yeah. at you and scare the shit out of you and and I honestly think that the reason most agents give up is that happens a couple of times to them and then they put, put it all down. And it might happen a few times in a row on a day, like it might be the first call of the day and then oh, I didn't like that and they give up. Man, I couldn't agree anymore. Um, for me, like for me, if you think the struggle of finding success is difficult... I found it nothing compared to the outcome of, 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 of people perceiving you to be successful. So there's a thing here that you guys call in your culture tall poppy syndrome, where it's almost okay for you to admit that you're so weak you want to attack somebody for being strong. Mm. It's, it's shocking. Like, mm. uh, it, it, um, it exists in my culture. I'm not for a second saying, oh, you know, but we don't have a name for it. We just call those people, you know, I don't know what we call them, but we don't say, we don't have a label as if it's cool or oh, it's just tall poppy syndrome. Mm. It's um, really not acceptable. Like the, 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 the difference is, right, one of my first ever experiences with exactly what you're saying, I was cold prospecting, this lady answers the phone, old Italian lady, they never sold anything in their lives, you know, keeping everything in. She, I'm talking to her and she says, you need to talk to my husband, he's the best guy to talk to. 
and uh, she puts down the phone and she screams at the husband, there's some foreign fucker on the phone looking for you. <laughs> and I got to wait for him to come and I got to pick up the phone and speak to this guy. And he clearly, now, did that hurt my feelings? Absolutely not. When I have to listen to my competitors make up lie after lie after lie about me as they shake my hand when they meet me in the coffee shop, as we know each other, that's a little bit more, um, it takes a little bit more um, resilience to interact with people, to know people, and for them to turn in you purely because you're successful. So um, people who are getting off the ground, um, I don't care what it is you're doing, easy is not an option. There will always be people to um, speak negative about somebody who's achieving stuff. Yeah, and in real estate, it is, it is full of that, and it never stops, and it will always... You will always get slapped in the face yeah. and you just have to get over it. I mean, yeah, it's going to be hard, but it's not as hard as having no money, right? I mean, hard, hard as being a farmer, having to farm hundreds yeah. of acres of land, watching in the your crop die. Yeah. Outside. Yeah, owned a bank a and load the, of money and trying to keep the kids going to school. And That's the, hard. And the, and the weather is dry and there's yeah. nothing yeah, you drought, can do yeah. about it, you no, know? We're, we're privileged. We we're, are absolutely privileged in, in this industry by you know, the fact that we can turn the taps on, yeah, yeah. you know, the farmer can't go out there and, you know, run around the paddock a little bit harder and the rain will come. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we can do that. destiny here. And yeah, absolutely are. And I think it just actually comes down to most agents, any agent really. I, I mean, there is an element of natural ability and some people who make a hundred calls to a certain group of people, if the next agent went and did it, there is a certain amount of, of, of different conversation and success out of those conversations because of the natural ability, maybe because of the practice. But it, I think any agent, I think most people, unless you've got a serious case of Asperger's or autism, <laughs> right, unless you have zero social skills whatsoever, anyone who tries hard enough can be successful in this business. Maybe not as successful as someone else who puts in just as much effort because there is some natural talent. But really it's about pulling your socks up and just doing the goddamn work and making it work for yourself. And, yep. and, and I think any, any agent that isn't successful just is, I don't like to use this word, but you're being a pussy and you're pussying out of what it takes to get that success. You're giving up too early and, yep. and you're not willing to put in that hard grind for you want that immediate success. You want that immediate gratification and it's not about that. And like you said, if you just focused on the money all the time and that you're not getting instant money for the work that you're doing, then you're going to fail because you're not looking after people. You're not actually, you're not actually focused on doing activities which will bring the opportunities later. But most people see it as a sales game. The really successful people understand it's service. And once yeah. you start to service the community and look after them, you can grow very quickly. Jeez, I went on a bit of a rant there. I yeah. just I get a bit emotional because I see people fail sometimes and it's... I, mean, I, 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 could, I could honestly sit next to a failing agent in a day and watch their day and just rip it apart. <laughs> but, mate, a lot of them are not going to succeed in any, in any um, industry or sector. Well, probably not if it has to do with uh, if they're not, you know, you know, I've, I know there's, there's, pe it's self-discipline, right? It's, Discipline is it's, the word. There's some people make great associates and you see them as a sales associate and if they're told what to do, if they're given a, a, a piece of paper at the start of the day, hey, you need to do these things to get paid, right? Yeah. You ha these things have to be done or you're not getting paid by the end of the day your, your wage, you come back at the end of the day and it's all done. Yeah, yeah. But when they're left out on their own... Yeah, yeah. freedom they, kills people. They, they, the, the freedom of having to do it themselves stops them from doing it. It's yeah. crazy. I don't know. I've never had that in, within me. It's always... I've, I've been blessed, really, that I just know that it's going to work out if I put the effort in because we've all got the same amount of hours in the day. So if I make more effort than anyone else, I'm sure to win. Yeah, it's yeah. just the m mindset that, that I've always had and it, and it works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in any game, you've got to work hard. It's as simple yeah. as that. And, and discipline is number one. Discipline is discipline number is one. Discipline is number one. Nobody ever went to the gym 10 times and came out looking good. You know, it's about something I'm learning. I've, I've 
joined the gym community very late, not late in life, but in recent years. Um, it takes time. It, it, you know, you got to be vulnerable. That's the big thing. People, we're all so fucking cool that no one wants to be vulnerable. You know, your Instagram, you're acting like you're a billionaire and you're living in your mum's wardrobe and it's like, well, you actually got to go back to reality in order to create a different reality. But if you're going to continue... Man, I've had people ring me, you know, looking for a job. I had this one guy, a young kid, I thought he was going to be good, rings me, he said, um, he said, you know you're the number one agent in Brisbane? It's exactly his opening line. So where do you get that information from? He said, are you in front of your computer? I said, yes. I tell the story a lot because it's actually... I said, yes. He said, go to Brisbane... Uh, type in Greater Brisbane and at the time I had which I wouldn't have today the most amount of sales in Brisbane and he says I want to join your team and I'm going to make it and I said to him okay I said and I remember thinking exactly this I said you're going to be really really good or absolutely shit one of the two because confidence comes from one or two things a false sense of economy or actually having the work ethic and the experience and the mileage uh, to know that you can do it. He came in and started on a Monday and finished on a Monday the same day. So <laughs> all smoke, all steam, no yeah. substance. Yeah. And there's a whole generation, mm. the next generation, like we're, we're in our, what age are you, mate, your mid-30s? Ah, well, yeah. Okay. In my 30s, mate, in my 30s. 38, 39? I'm 40 in two months, can you believe it? Which, hence why I've just blown The shark up. attack. The sh yes, shark attack. Shark attack. We'll say that. The shark, shark attack, attack blew my meniscus yeah. and I've just had surgery. So excuse my dirty, scabby bandage over my knee exposed to those watching this, mm. possibly on YouTube. Potentially. Potentially. Where were we when I got this? Oh, yeah, the next generation, the younger guys and girls, I think they're even lacking even more of that resilience, you know? Um, the guys and girls I'm meeting, it's. Um, I think the next generation, those that have it, um, will be... Uh, even more successful because the competition won't be as dense you know mm -hmm. there's a lot of people our age and older that uh, that are fighters you know that are that just want to be successful yeah but I'm finding it hard to find and I've got a couple of really good people in my team young guys in their 20s but they are they're few and far between oh yeah it is hard to find um, I find it it's just gotten harder and harder to find really really keen um, young people that actually want to work hard. Mm. What what our what working hard was for me when I started. Yeah. You know, it's 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 rare to find, and I, I kind of feel like it's it's the 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 guys and girls that have grown up with you know probably less money and less fortune that that seem to have it in them. They have the more grit. Yeah, they speaking. do. They do. Um, the ones that have the rich parents and... It's difficult. Like, people talk I've, about coming from nothing. I think it's in, in these areas, too, because you're in quite an affluent area, uh, you know, and all the all the kids living around there, they've all got rich mums and dads. You know, and the telltale sign for me is mm. when dad or mum rings to get them a job, yeah, I'm thinking, totally. do you know what our industry is? If you got to ring me, they got no chance. And I'm always polite and I'll meet with them, but really, if you're, if you're out there and you're watching this and you want to have a crack, it's got to come back to you. I find it as well. All the kids these days, they don't call you. When I wanted a job, I used to call around or I would walk into the office and I'd say, can I speak to the director? Yeah. And I would just get them out there. Even if it was busy, I would say, please, it'll just take a minute. And I'd get the director out and I'd go face to face with them and I would shake their hand and look them in the eye and say, I'm looking for a job. Mate, I got a call back from every single one. These days, they just send their resume. Yeah, or they, they hit you up on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. They were, I mean, <laughs> Which is fine I mean, even, it's even that's call. better. But like yeah. all the kids these days, they just send resumes. Yeah. And then you get 100 resumes and we're supposed to find some diamond in there and it all, all says the same shit. I don't even read yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't read them either, to be honest. If you're looking for a job in real estate, impress the, the person who you want to work for and just get in there and meet them. Yeah. And then if you have an interview, follow them up. Yeah, yes, yes. All right? So many that I interview... And oh, I want a job. I'm going to be so good. I'm this. I'm that. They leave, and I say, I'm not going to call them. I want to see if they call me. They never call back. Yeah, yeah. They don't want a job. They yeah, just... like well, you know, like give us, show us that you really want it. Show yeah. us that you're willing to make a call back to me and 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 have a bit of rejection if you thought, you know, just just call. You probably you would have got the job if you called me. Yeah, you know? yeah. We would have because I would have gone nice one. I wanted to see if you'd call me back. But most of the time they don't. Tell me on a different topic. I'm worrying about your um, 
your quality of guest. I hear you had Justin Nickerson on here. Is that true? Oh, uh, yeah, the auctioneer. Yeah, small guy, quite yappy. I was getting desperate. Yeah. Yeah. A bit um, of a lull week. You couldn't get any, any go-getters or any... Well, yeah, like it's just there's only a couple of big dogs. And then mm. I was like, well, I've got all the best. And then I was like an auctioneer and, you know... Everyone loves a chihuahua from time to time. Wow, you're really having a go. He's going to love that. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, it's... All right. What happens with Justin is he stands up in front of a room of 50 people that my team put a lot of resources into getting there. So we worked hard for four weeks to co- create this competitive environment. And we give him the center stage and every time he's, he stabs me in the back. So. He gets up there and he has a go. I saw that on one of your Instagram posts. Has got my he accent. Loved, yeah, he has a go it's at your like, accent. You for real, and man? the whole crowd laughs. <laughs> but, but you know what? You're an he easy used, target, mate. I know, mate. Yeah. But he used the same joke the week before. I bet he does. And auctioneers, week, mate. Auctioneers, they have like, they have 10 jokes. Oh, I thought, do you know what his favorite joke is? And it's so incredibly lame. He'll say, oh, a five bedroom house uh, suitable for the most fertile of families. And people laugh and I'm like, you're a tosser, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're a tosser. <laughs> shout out to Justin. He asked for a shout out on my way here today. So there's your shout out, man. There's a shout out. Mm. Um, so going on to uh, like your team now, right? So mm. you started out, like, when you're at your stage, you're doing over 100 deals a year. And mind you, most of them are high end prestige. Are you still prospecting like you used to? Yeah, look, for me, relationships, yes. Uh, cold stuff, no. Um, I should be doing more. For me to achieve my goals, I'm here giving advice to people when in reality, that's kind of what we're here for as an open chat and to share some knowledge. I'm out there seeking knowledge. Um, I can sit here and tell you indirectly how wonderful I am when in reality, my business is just gap after gap after gap, missed opportunity after missed opportunity. So you still lose a lot? I lose more than most. It's, 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 if your success rate is 80%, well, how great is your 20%? You want it to be massive because it means you've gone in for a lot. Um, and I never lose any listing because of commission. So all you people out there that think you're losing because of commission, you're not. Um, you're losing because of you. I lose because of me. I lose because my energy wasn't right. Or I walked into a room and I wasn't there or I wasn't present or I was distracted or I failed on some level to show these people that the people around me and I can get them more money than anybody else. Mm-hmm. And I believe that to be 100% true, but I left that room without them believing it. A hundred percent. Well, it all comes down to value. At the end of the day, they're choosing you, they're choosing the best agent who's going to give them the best value. The best value is going to be which of these people am I going to end this transaction with more money? hundred percent. So whether that's in your scripts and dialogues or your energy or your how prepared you were or the, exper- the experience, I mean, it all adds up, but mm-hmm. it comes down to value at the end of the day. And so you can beat anyone being the highest amount of commission if the client sees you as the best value and they're going to get the most out of the transaction. True, right? your service. Yeah. 100%. So you're still prospecting. Well, then you've got a team, right? Mm-hmm. So you got, I saw your team. You've got two bright looking ladies and two two young guys who are sort of like sales associates. Yes. Can you tell me how your team works? Um, so my team will say over the last 12 months, um, and I say that because we're just trying, we're, we're growing our team at the moment to get to the next level. Um my team, when we got to the highest level and sustained good numbers, um, was Kaylee has been with me from the start. Uh, Kaylee's a co-agent, but really she's she's um, she's as good as as I would say any agent out there. Understands the process, runs the process, works hard. Denise is our EA. She runs the business operations manager. Mm-hmm. Everything from preparation to on the market to running us. Yeah, she's does everything on the back end. Uh-huh. Ollie and Bailey are both co-agents who have a um, strong um, portion of their time dedicated to bringing on new clients, creating new opportunities, getting us in front of people. Okay, so what do they do every day? So who who are they calling? Do they call your open home attendees? Do they, or are you focused on that? Yeah. Or are they answering your buyer inquiries and things like that? Yeah, look, the open home attendees, we have a hybrid. Um, anybody who's interested or, or looking at a property, the lead agent needs to be dealing with. The lead agent needs to be negotiating on all properties. It's that's what we're hired for. Um, the um, co-agents, their job is to is to success prospect, so let people know about results, about up and coming open homes, and also ring back through past buyers to make sure that our new clients are getting every opportunity. And they're just leveraging everything. Yeah. Everything that you do that you could have yeah. done that you should have done, they're doing it, and they're yeah. doing that little bit more. Yeah. Um, and we don't. 
we sell without selling our service and the product. Mm -hmm. So we're never asking for appraisals. We're never, you know, on your street and it works in different demographics. But yeah, we just service the community and that's their job. Their yeah. job is to service the community. And you sell a lot of high-end properties. It's, I mean, you're in that kind of area too, but I'm sure there's plenty of agents that aren't selling, you know, average price of $2 million. Um, Was it always like that? Were you always in the high end or, or did you kind of fall into it? Did you have that goal? No, I think if anything, my average sale price has been dragged down by me, not up by me. Mm. At the stage I'm at, I should be detaching from the... Uh, cheaper stock and pushing my brand to the higher stock. The reason why I haven't done it, and I know it should be done, there's only two ways, to, there's three ways to increase your business. Sell more homes, sell more expensive homes, charge more fees. Your fees, no matter how good you are, getting past a certain figure is not really achievable. Um, your average sale price is the big one that you can change. You don't work harder for $52 million deals than you do for $51 million deals. You don't work any harder, yet your return is double. Um, for me, I find it hard. I, I'm in the people game. I, you know, and I keep talking about I care and, and I do. I shouldn't discredit it. But I think a family with a million dollar home deserves to benefit from my skills as much as a family with a six million dollar home. For sure. Yeah. Everyone deserves the same. But how do you, how did you get into, I mean, you're still, you're still above the average. We're in selling the area. plenty of good stuff, man. And you're you know, selling plenty. We're selling riverfronts. I've got a riverfront being lynched. Like we've sold homes, four, five, yeah. six, seven million. Yeah. Loads of homes, three to four, four to five. Loads of homes. Um, yeah. So did you target, did you specifically go? We service the community. You just service everyone. You no. haven't, you haven't had a goal of like, I just need to get there. Did it just gradually increase as you? Uh, look, um, you need credibility at the upper level to sell at the upper level. Um, but equally, if two women are at a coffee shop, two women, two men are sitting at the coffee shop, they're all chatting. They're talking about your service, who you are. They're not. Nobody's going to ignore a recommendation because of a sale price. You may have yuppie people that are just posh that want to deal with somebody who has a high net worth and you know hangs in their circles. You will have that. I know people that continuously hire this very average agent because of profile and status. And I'm thinking, if you only knew how much that was costing you, I've watched sale prices around. I send my friends, I'm like, my network, I'm like, go and look at that. That person's selling it, go and look at that. So, um, where was I saying? Yeah, look, and, and the flip side is, somebody will say to me, oh, we've only got a million dollar home, Tony, why are you interested? And or will you be my agent? Will you be the one and I'll explain our service and this is what we're doing? And yes, we are. And, and I'll say my ulterior motive here, I have two big motives when I do a transaction, when I help people sell a home. First one is what they say about us afterwards, and the second one is the sale price that the neighbours see. N if I provide an average service, again, coffee shop example, a group sitting at the coffee shop, Tony was shit, he promised us something uh, he didn't deliver. Nobody in that conversation is saying, okay, how much was your home? Oh, your home was a million. Oh, it's okay, it was only a million. That is an, an X against your name, whether it's one million or 50 million is irrelevant, it doesn't come into the conversation. So your brand is being exposed through a signboard, through a media and through a family who are going to speak about you afterwards. So whether you're selling at one or five or 10 or 20, um, the objective is the same, optimize the sale price, provide good customer service, walk away happy with everybody winning. Mm. And to your question, um, man, I think I stopped myself from doing more higher end um, maybe I don't invest enough in the relationships. They do require. I think the people that service the high end, the high network community, uh, often require more TLC. They need to feel um, a different way to somebody with a million dollar home. You know, a five million dollar vendor is a different person. Mm -hmm. They're the CEO of the company. They're not the employee. Mm -hmm. How you speak to them, how you treat them, how you often they can be in speaking a bit generalizing here often they can be a great client because they understand hire a good consultant give them what they ask for support them and you'll get the outcome sometimes you're dealing with a manager in life who's a manager in consultancy so they want to tell you how to do your job and i have to manage them managing me while i manage their campaign yeah. so no we're not doing it this way and i'll tell you why because and they'll say to you, oh well i've sold four homes in my life and you're thinking i know you've had experience um but this is the way to really, and people, sometimes it's easier to say, uh, you know, okay, let's do that. You know, why aren't we doing three open homes a week? I can see these guys are doing it. These guys are doing it because they're trying to meet your neighbors to get business. All they're really doing is diluting your competition. Yes. You know, everything has a formula. 
Hundred percent. Yes, mate. Sounds like you've got some great scripts and dialogues on how to deal with all of these cl- types of clients. I'm going to test you on that in a bit. Okay. I don't think you knew you were in store for that, but um, I don't have any scripts and dialogues, but I have answers. You just, you just yeah, okay. Free that, ball, we call it. That's a great. That's a great answer. Great way to say it. <laughs> scripts and dialogues, as we say in real estate. Yeah. But are there any habits you've picked up, like? Because you said your success like in the last four years has exploded. Any habits that have really been game changing for you? I mean, obviously there's team growth, but I'm I'm, like personal habits that have have really been a game changer for you. I mean, I think, yeah, I think I've I've given away a lot. Like there's an ugly side to it as well. There is an ugly side to it. Oh, give us the ugly, man. You want the ugly? You're a terrible gambler and a coke addict underneath it all. (laughs) Only one of those two. (laughs) No, no, no. So. Um, gambling. Okay, no, no, okay. no, no, no. Um, <laughs> I read something recently and it resonated with me so much. And they were talking about champions. And they're saying everybody walk, looks into a room and sees a champion, right, or a high performer. Yeah. And everybody thinks that person has something that they don't, right? So that's the kind of, oh, that person. When in reality, the truth is a true champion lacks something that you have. You know, when you, I use Cristiano Ronaldo's name already. Why is that guy, he has everything. Or why keep pushing? Why? Because somewhere inside he wants to feel good enough. If you know his story well enough, it's because his dad fucked off when he was a child and he's probably just trying to feel whole and the more trophies and the more money and the more gold. And look, he's a great guy who donates a lot of charity. The point I'm making is um, sometimes we idolise people who shouldn't be idolised. Um, and sometimes... What can be great from the outside is is not great from the inside. The thing that I'm blessed about is I genuinely, and I've said it 10 times, but our service provides a positive impact in the community. So I feel that that's a great thing. Some very successful people, um, like Jeff Bezos, for example, right, one of the richest, if not the richest guy on the planet. He's built a business from nothing to multi-trillion dollars. But you hear more and more stories about his staff being on stamp and welfare and not having enough so um i just want to make sure that if if you are a high performer or you're striving to be that it's for the right reasons somewhere along the way i had to you know recheck in with myself i was going to honestly here where here's what my future would have looked like just in a summary successful guy in an early grave that was my that was my trajectory it was work all day and all night eat shit food stress to the eyeballs um, no dis, no, no um, self-respect. Just absolutely, fifty-year-old dead bum. That was where I was heading, like a washed-up footballer. I watch all these old real estate agents, you know, in their fifties, not old as in former performers, not old in age, and they've lost their identity because their identity was um, was that. Yeah, you know, like a dried-up footballer. That I always think it must be hard being a pro athlete and yeah. then one day whew, it ends. Losing your and if you weren't the, you know, if you weren't a Kobe Bryant yeah. on the basketball court, what's the chances of you getting the commentary job? Yeah, you know, yeah, or, yeah. Or something oh. like where do they but go? All if these you were a good players, son and you were a good father and you mm, were, mm, you know, mm, whole beyond yeah, that, that's you great. can walk away, hold your head up and keep moving forward. So, um, I don't know. So... So what you're saying is, is there's a real dark side to you. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> no, but when did that change? So you're, you're saying like there was a time when you all it was was work and you were, you were getting pretty fucked up. Obsessive. Obsessive. Yeah. Obsessive. And that's changed. So you've changed some habits to, to balance yourself a bit better. What's happened? Um, when, and when did that change? Uh, I got um, the year of, of COVID, did so 21, 22. And did something bad happen? No. No. no, just uh, look, my health was, I was stressed. If you've ever had a level of stress that's absolutely um, consuming, mm. you can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't walk, you can't talk. I was done, 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 done. And I had great people around me, but I wasn't relying on them enough. Mm. So for me now, I've, I had taken a step back. I had empowered the people around me to do their roles to a higher level. And now we're moving forward together. Mm. I wasn't the best person to do all the things I was doing, but I was still doing them. Now I have people around me doing the tasks that I, uh, I won't say I don't need to do because they're just as important, but they don't need to be done by the lead agent. Yeah. Buyer inquiries are one. You know, like I'm not going to answer 20 calls a day and I reply to 10 emails a day and be 
extraordinarily sharp in a negotiation for a vendor. So it's about knowing that you've got a certain amount of energy and you need to manage it and you need to make sure that you're doing high level activities all the time. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. really important what you said. It's not that those activities are beyond you or that they're not as important because all of those tiny they're tasks massive. are massive. They're and massive. that those are what generate the opportunities. Oh. Those activities being done at the highest level are actually, you know, just as important as anything else. So yeah. having that team and you're obviously a very good leader. You've got you, you have figured out that it is about building a team and, and training these you know, talented people on your team to be the best that they can be at what they do and having having certain roles within your team. I'd like to talk about that a bit more, building a team, because that really is how you get to the pinnacle of success in real estate. You can't do it on your own. You've got you've got your skill set and then you've got to become a leader and you've got to build a team. Um, I see so many agents, they never make that step. Or they make that step, they fail once with the first person, they give it up, they never do it again. They say, I'm not good with the team. I can't have a sales associate because it didn't work out. Um, trust me, many of them don't work out. It's hard, okay. it's It is hard. hard. Right. And, the, and the bigger you get, the harder it is because the more you rely on these people for yeah. more. It's but not... um, if you were building a team and you have an agent, what, what, what's the order you would go in? in good question. Because some people go straight into like having an admin. And I think personally, I think it's, you know, let's double down on those activities that create the opportunities. That's what I think is the first step. I, I agree with you in theory, especially if you're in a traditional agency um, where, you know, you're, you're sharing a portion of your of your of your income with the agency i think there's an obligation on them to provide a service for that it also depends depends on splits if you're in a different model and you're getting higher um well then there's not going to be support there to support you and someone needs to support the vendors while you grow um i agree for the most part generally speaking prospector um leverager whatever you want to call it someone to create more opportunity for the team is a the most important. Um, it depends on your circumstances, though. Yeah, I think it does. It diff it's different in different it, markets. In and different that's structures. But generally, generally, yeah. it would be the prospector. Oh, that's what I would want. And what would you get them to do every day? Prospect is a short answer. Um, but what is I mean, prospect? It's like a it's, it's, yeah. it's this floaty word. You know. You know what, I mean? We're still figuring it out. I know, like, because. Like I've watched another brand come into our area over the last two years and they've got a bit of market share, but it's they're just harassing the community. And what happens with that is your bell curve comes about quicker. So it goes vroom and then vroom. You know, like people are just, okay, they can smell the, desp you know, you have to provide a service. It's repeat touch points. It's repeat touch. Like it's, I don't even want to talk about it so boring, but it's true. It's, you know, I know it's boring, but so many need to hear it mm. and they want to hear it from from, you know, people that are doing it because that's how you get successful. Yeah, I think it's it's not hearing new stuff. It's hearing the old boring stuff over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. You know? Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I think the best thing you can have in this game, which doesn't come about easily, the best thing you can have is soul signs in the community. And vendors talking about you in the community. Mm. When you work in a area, that area is smaller than you'd ever think. You know, you've got a couple of thousand homes, a couple of thousand families, a Woolies, two schools, a church, community centre. Like you've got, these people are so in their bubble, especially, you know, the affluent areas. Um, they're very, you know, I've got a couple of Facebook page groups and it's every... It's not hard to make a compounding impact. And the word is compounding. You do the right thing and it happens quick. Traction occurs quickly. So too does decline. You know, you can, I've watched people, I've watched them have great market share. But my God, if you, mis, if you mishandle that, the, 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 what is the descent is a lot faster than the ascent. You go up quick and down oh, faster. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, you know, you can, you spend years building a profile and... It you can know, be you can, you can lose it. If you disappear and go away for six months, you come back and you are at the bottom again. It go, it goes so quick, you know. That's uh, You've shared some really valuable stuff and I'd love to test you because I love testing agents there you go. on this podcast. I fail with, most with, tests. With, with, you know, putting you in a situation mm. and just hearing how you would be with a certain client because we all mm. come across them. I hate role play. 
We're going to do some. I'm going right. to put you on. He didn't know he was up for this. I didn't so. know he was up for anything except to chat. Yeah. Go on. So you're probably going to hate me for it, but I'm going to put you through it. And I'm going to get to the end as fast as you, possible. You, you, you sit in a lot of listing presentations. Yes. You deal with a lot of high-end clients. I'm sure yes. you come across it. You've got clients that they don't want to pay for marketing. Mm. They don't want to price the property at uh, the correct market price. They want to price it way too high. They don't want to go to auction. They want to sell it off market. They don't want to do any work to the property. They think the house will sell itself for the best price, um, mm -hmm. even though it's looking a shambles. So I'm going to test you on a few of those. Okay. Let's say you're in a nice house, right? $2 million, could be 2.2 if it was looking its best. Mm. Um, my name's Bill. And I don't like spending the bills, all right? And uh, it's lucky you have kids because that's the most dad joke I've ever heard. <laughs> I do have one kid, so I can make dad jokes now. Okay. Um, but you know, where you know, I want you to sell it off market. I don't want to pay for any advertising. I and I'm just one of those clients that's just a bit of a pain in the ass. And you're trying to give me the strategy to get the most out. So we're going to do that. Okay. All right. Be prepared for a response you might yeah. be prepared for. Uh -huh. It will only take five or ten minutes, all right, for you to sell me on this. But, Tony, it's thanks, mate. Take five you, seconds. You, you obviously sell a lot in the area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mate, I, I've, I'm pretty keen to, you know, get this moving. Um, I've, you've been through the marketing costs there. They're quite extraordinary. They're quite high. I didn't realize that, you know, I've got to pay your fee. Um, you know, this place is easily worth 2.2. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I'm not taking any less than that. Uh, I've got to pay your commission and I've got to pay another 10 grand. If you don't get the 2.2, because I said I'm not getting 2.2. If I'm not getting 2.2, I'm not selling it. I don't want to pay 10 grand and then we don't sell this place. So why don't we try off market? Is this my turn to talk? Yeah. Bill. I could have given you a better prompt. In that environment, I would have I would have given you a lot of recommendations and a lot of advice to get to a certain point. And if at the end of the point I'm still met with complete um, resilience, resilience not the word, um, reluctancy, um, I will start to move away from the business. Um, I will say, Bill, um, you in your own words, you've seen a lot of our... Um, of our successful campaigns. Uh, we have a formula that works. Um, you're going to hold me accountable for the outcome. Uh, you mentioned my fee. It's payable only at successful settlement. The price you want to achieve for your home, um, as I said to you, I, I thought your home was a two plus property. Is two two out there? I Quite probably. If you said any higher, I would, I would um, have reservations. You're looking for a premium for your property. Our presentation is not conducive with a premium right now, respectfully. The process that to create competition to get the outcome, um, you're, you're um, not leaning towards. Um, so I would be asking you, Bill, why is it you want to hire me when I've made several recommendations and, and none of them are, um, are um, of interest to you? Well, I just believe that my house is definitely worth 2-2. You have shown me some comparables. But I went to that house there that got 2.2 mm. in that you showed me just down the road. And it doesn't even have a pool. I've got a pool. I've got, yeah, it's south facing, but the, a better view of the, of the trees and great backyard. I just, I really believe it's there. And I want to work with an agent that, that believes it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't believe it's worth 2.2, how are you going to convince someone else it's worth 2.2? I fully agree. And right now, um, I would need you to support me with our strategy for me to support you and know that we were going to get you the outcome. Um, if we don't paint the property, change the carpets, um, and don't get me wrong, your home has been immaculately presented, um, but it is 20 years old, and the price you're looking for um, is, 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 is up there. And I think it's a, attainable um, for me to believe I need to know I've done everything right. And if we don't present it right, 
to the best of its ability and market it to the best of its ability. And every example you've given me of properties you've seen and been through uh, were not off market. Um, so if you're going to hold me accountable for the outcome, I need you to support me um, so that I can guarantee you the outcome. Can't guarantee you, but for me to get you the result, um, I need you to to um, follow this formula. And what I'm doing there is I, I am passive in my, I'm not offensive, but I'm fucking telling him, I'm not taking your business, which is, if it's not conducive with the outcome. I don't want your neighbors to see me fail because, you know, there's an expression, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And, and we've come here with a plan, but if we don't execute it, and I'm sure, I know you said you're speaking with other agents, do they feel as though they can get you the result? I've had another agent say that, that they think it's worth more than that. Yeah, and on off-market presented in its current light? Well, just based on the, the, the sales and, what you know, they've sold a few in the area, not yeah. as many as you, but they've yeah. sold some big properties and they think it's worth more. Yeah, look, for me, to, for me to look you in the eye and tell you something, I need to know that everything's been done right. If I tell you your home is worth 10 million, does that make it worth 10 million? No. If we follow a process and do everything right... Maybe more than 2.2 is out there. Maybe it is. But at the end of this, I want to know that we've got the best result. The best result now feels like a price. It feels like a price. But really, what every vendor I've ever met wants and what I want for you is the best from the market. Can you imagine if you got 2.2 right now, 2.2, and another buyer came in an hour after you signed a contract and said, I'd give you 2.4. How good would you feel about your 2.2? Yeah, I wouldn't like it. Well, there you go. So you, you're not after a figure. You're after the best from the market. And for me to know that has occurred, there's a formula we need to follow. Other agents, uh, in your description, are offering you potentially more money with no resources and the presentation of a family home instead of a show home. I mean, that sounds to me like someone who's more focused on winning your business than optimizing your sale price. I love your composure. I wouldn't say that at this stage, being Bill. No more, uh, no more role play. Thank no you. more, is that it? Yeah. That is actually enough because there were some serious nuggets in there. I love that. No, I really do just love the composure that you have. If you, if you like, I'm totally sold if I'm talking to someone, if, I'm, if I was selling my house and someone could talk to me with like just that. So two things to interrupt you. I care. And I know the advice I'm giving is best. How do how is the other person speaking to them right now when they're bullshit? Your house is worth two point two, and all you got to do is open the door. How is their composure? Because they're either a psychopath who can sit in front of somebody and lie, or their core their core temperature is rising as they're sitting in that meeting. And there's a very different who's building trust, who's being honest mm. and transparent. Mm. The, but like just the way that you deliver it, you could deliver that same message like the same words I'm la yeah. in a in a in a kind of a panicked version yeah. and it doesn't come across the same way i really think just the, the the composure the you know the way that you deliver it is is so confident or it just gives the person on the other side such confidence and uh yeah that's a skill that only comes after perfecting your art so mate I'm sure so many people who have watched this have got plenty out of it. I certainly have. I appreciate Thank you, you coming on. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me, Matt. No Good worries to sit all. down with you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning into the Get Keen podcast. If today's episode inspired you, please show your support with a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And make sure you subscribe on your favorite platform too. Don't stop there. Join our community of forward thinkers by connecting with me on social media at Dan underscore Lee underscore Plum. I'm looking forward to exploring more strategies and insights with you on your journey to the top. Until next time, keep getting keen.